Hi. On this video, I do this. Yeah. What's going on there, YouTubers, gamers, and hobbyists? And welcome to P and Q, the question and answer series where you get to ask me questions, or put comments down, and I respond to the following week. Now you can do this one of three ways. You can pop your comment or question down below, and I'll just print it off. Um, or you can email me at minimalzone at gmail.com. I'll put a link in the video description below. Or if you do one of these chat and ramble videos, you can ask a question through that. Right. That's it, I think. Okay, so I've got like three pages of uh, stuff to read through now, but um, I'm just going to go top to bottom. So it's going to go emails, uh, video response, or video question, and then comments. So I've got three emails this week. I've had a few weeks where I haven't had a single one, but now I've got three all at once. What's going on? It's crazy. Anyway. Let's get on with it, shall we? I've got my coffee here, so sip of coffee, fuel up. Mm. Ah, and the first email, so anonymous. I've got the written that emails are anonymous. So anonymous writes: When you go away on holiday, do you prefer to pack light or take as much with you as possible? It's a good question. I don't actually go on holiday that often, probably a handful of times in my life, you know, like away, away. Um, but I suppose, and I, obviously you guys know I've got a big holiday coming up end of this year, but I suppose I would, I would, I would pack as light as I could, as opposed to packing as much, you know, everything in the kitchen sink included. No, I, I like to pack travel light, that's me. So you might want to bring something back with me, you never know. Second one says, Greetings at Mini Warzone. What is your favourite aspect of playing a miniature war game overall, please? That's a good question too. Um, hmm. I suppose the visual aesthetic of it. I like to sit back look at what's going on on the battlefield which is why I like to take my time with the painting and things uh, make it look as good as I can so my my tabletop standard I like I like to think is a quite a high tabletop standard well it is for me anyway so but yeah the, the visual aspect of it and just sitting back and looking at it and visualizing and thinking wow you know that looks cool the suspension of disbelief and the last email, it's quite a long one, it says, Hi, I have only recently discovered your channel and see that you have been doing the YouTube thing for a few years now. I was amazed to see over 700 plus videos on it and climbing, so what I mean. I, I, I didn't write this. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't paid anybody to big me up or anything. So it says, what got you into doing YouTube, and how different would this hobby be for you if YouTube did not exist? Also, what are your thoughts concerning the recent crackdown on YouTube censorship? Crackdown. Got that in inverted commas. Put it on the, the flapping of gargoyle wings. Crackdown. Oh, no, feeling crazy again today. Um, oh well, let's go back got me into doing YouTube. Um, well, look at look for my, uh, in fact I'll put a link to it as well, my I am a Wargamer response. I'll put that in the link in the description below. I think I mentioned it on there. It was to do with mini Wargaming and me wanting to be like them, basically. So that's your short answer for that one. Um, but I'll go into more detail in that other video if you, if you want to look at it. How different would this hobby be for me if YouTube did not exist? I reckon the hobby would be quite a bit different for me because I wouldn't be as good a painter as I am. Now, I'm not saying I'm any amazing painter or anything, but I wouldn't have learnt so much about it if YouTube didn't exist because I learn 
most of my stuff from, you know, YouTubers. Hmm. And I learn things via YouTube and I, I get to know things. Um, I suppose I would be forced to go to a, my gaming club more often without YouTube because uh, YouTube fill, fills a gap. I mean, I'm a huge fan of solo wargaming. Uh, that said, it's nice to play other people sometimes. Um, but the whole YouTube thing, I, you know, you can, it's a whole other element, another area of the hobby. You can just sit back down. If I'm feeling poorly, for example, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to paint, build, play, anything. I can just sit back and watch other people's videos. It's fantastic. Um, what are my thoughts concerning the recent crackdown of YouTube censorship? Um, doesn't bother me in the slightest because I don't have any kind of content or material on my channel which would need censorship, so I'm not bothered at all. My channel is a family friendly channel and always will be. Okay, so that's the emails done, that was quite quick. So I'm on my swivel chairs and I'm just spinning around. It's quite a creaky one, so when I move it kind of is quite noisy. I picked it up in a charity shop for a fiver. I'm chuffed with that. Um, right, the video question comes from Spider666 on his uh, chatter brewing a big black dog. I think that was the one. He says, um, what are your views on Kickstarter? Now before I before I go into that, I have to say about the other request about seeing my work area. I'm working on it. I've got to tidy it. And that could be a video in itself, you know, tidying my workspace. And I will show you. Um, so I will, I will show my work area at some point. It's, it's on my to-do list. But what are my views on Kickstarter? I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's a great, um, it's a great idea. I do think it has changed a lot since it first started. The whole ethos of Kickstarter has changed because, um, as you say, it was to help kind of um, smaller companies or people just starting out um, get the funding to get their idea out there. And now it's kind of now I look at the word Kickstarter. I just think pre-order, pre-order with a bonus or two thrown in, maybe you know, like a, a certain miniature or or whatever it could be. Um, and I, I don't, I've never done Kickstarter myself, I've never backed anything, so I don't know what it's like in that respect. Um, I've done Indiegogo, a couple of different campaigns, um, you know, I've backed a few of those, um, three I think. Um, but not Kickstarter, so um, I can't comment on what it's like. Um, to back something on Kickstarter, um, you seem to be uh, a bit of a veteran at it now, Stephen. <laughs> um, so, but but from what you've uh, said and what I've seen of your experience, it seems good. Um, but I, overall, I think it's a good thing. Yes, I do. Okay, so now we're on to the comments left last week or questions. Mm. I like a cup of coffee here. Good morning. And this morning is a bit of a dismal one. It's windy, it's not raining, but it's windy, a bit windy, it's overcast. But, um, uh, not hopeful for the weather. Hope it changes. I did manage to cut the grass yesterday, which was a major achievement, so I'm a bit oh, deflated today, but not badly. Anyway, anyway, I'm rambling on now, so we go to War Forge. And he says, what do you think of the new 40k comic coming out? Well, until I read your comment, I didn't know there was one coming out. I I, I tend to be um, a bit of a hermit in 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 certain things in terms of finding things out. Um, I think it can only be a good thing, and I'll check it out for sure. I think mean, it's good, you know, get younger people into the hobby, perhaps. That combined with the new um, kill team thing they got going, which I want to get hold of, by the way. I have a run through that. Um, I think it's a good thing to get people started in the hobby scene. You don't have to have 
hundreds and hundreds of miniatures or spend hundreds of pounds to get an army together. It's just crazy. Um, so yeah, I think that would be good. I don't know what quality it would be, it's, it's like, so until I see one, I reserve judgement. But I think it can only be a good thing. Uh, Eric Beer. Nice one Pete. Lol. Yeah, my question was meant to be a tough one. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, that was the one about oh, what I've to change the world. I would love to get my wife on camera for a video now and again, but she is not keen. Any suggestions to help persuade her? Well, I suppose really I should have asked Mrs. Minnie Warzone this question. Um, well, I think you got to do is start small. Um, From what I know about your situation, your wife is not into the hobby at all. But you want to get her on, on the old video uh, here and there. Um, start small, like just a quick, oh and there's my wife and daughter, say bye bye, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and gradually integrate them that way, because then, then, then it'll be like, they'll be get the feeling, um, well yeah, okay, I've I've been on camera, so I'm not, I'm not that bothered about it now. And just do that a few times, and then it'll become, you know, second nature to them, or your wife, anyway. Um, but I don't know. You could um, you could do a I don't know. Um, ask Mrs. Eric Beer a question. And like one question, uh, you know, every so often, and then put it to her. Um, don't have her on camera. I uh, just have a have a voice over or something. I don't know. Uh, I think you're. Uh, I think you're talking to the wrong man, really. I'm not giving you very good advice here, but but the one piece of advice that I think is relevant is start small in whatever way. Don't go full in, like, right, you're going to be on a video and you're going to talk about this and I want you to say, you know, I want you to review this or talk about that. Start small. Very, very small. That's how I would do it. Um, ah, one way I know I got Mrs. Minnie Warzone starting to get into it was... You you do something and you you really need some help with the camera. Can you say? Could you just? I'll tell you what, love. Could you just film me? You know. So pretend this camera is being held by someone. Then so you can say, right, okay, blah 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 blah. Um, so it's bye from me and bye from. And they might say something, you know, uh, or whatever. But just get them doing a bit of camera work now and again while you've got hands free, just to show something or do something. You know, say, do you mind just? Filming me, do this, love. You know, I don't want you on camera or anything. It's fine, but just, and then they're kind of like they might volunteer talking themselves, and you know, or whatever. That's my advice, because I did it on the building of this studio, where I really needed someone like an extra pair of hands to hold the camera while I was. I can't even remember what I was doing. I, mean, I was just pointing and talking, and. Um, yeah, I think it was to do with, it was about this time of year, about a year ago, wasn't it now? And it was October. Yeah, October, so I was I was into October and my wife wanted me to do a, a WAG. She said, yeah, oh, you've been threatening to do it on camera, so do it. So I did that. I don't know. Eventually, later on, she did that herself, so it was kind of fun. But yeah, that'd be my advice. Get her holding the camera, doing the camera work first, but start small. I hope that helps. Um, cause I think it's good to get our families involved, and you know, without pressuring them into doing anything. But uh, it's just nice, you know. Cruons the Slickers says, "Nice pink cupid. What's been your best hobby moment?" Well, that's easy. That's being recognised in Exeter by someone complete stranger. Who knew me, who came up to me and knew me as Mini Warzone Pete. Best. That's like the next city up from me. And um, 
again, that's a part of YouTube. Uh, you know, what wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for YouTube, um, I suppose. But yeah. That and discovering all these great channels out there you, amongst you guys keeps me entertained. Right. Oh, the next one's a very long one. Graham Collin. He says, <clears throat> What would I invent to change the world? A cure for basic stupidity. Ha! He's got a point there. He says, um, I liked the Ultramarines movie too. You just have to take it for what it was and not what you wanted it to be. Sure, if they had a Peter Jackson-esque budget, I'm sure they could have produced something epic, and then in brackets, which would still have had a lot of people bitching about it. Yes, you are right. I think the lip-syncing in Ultramarines was particularly good, because as I understand it, they 3D mapped the actors' faces as they were delivering the dialogue, then simply 3D rendered the animation from that. That way it's also easier to get the characters to look like the actors portraying them. Yeah, there are as I understand it, um, a few different ways of doing this. But that seemed to work particularly well for that movie. For me, the Lord Inquisitor prologue was okay, but the character of the Inquisitor himself didn't strike a chord. I felt that he came over as too much of a sad little bully rather than someone who's fanatical about the Imperial Creed, meting out the uh, Emperor's justice. The Inquisitors in Star Wars Rebels did it much better. Regarding the length of time it's taking for the guys producing the movie, aside from the obvious issue of funding, there's also the possibility that they've had to keep running everything by GW, possibly several times as they make the required changes before they could move on to the next step. And getting the official, yes we're happy with that, is likely to take a long time. Now that they have the green light, things will probably start happening more quickly and they can probably get more funding. Yes, I agree with that as uh, well. I'd also like to add, though, that the problem with taking a long time is that over the course of six years, animation techniques change dramatically. Your filming techniques that you started at the beginning of the movie be completely different to what you're doing at the end, so it would be difficult to marry them up and make it kind of consistent throughout. That's just my worry. But, yeah, it's, a, it's good. Uh, and... Um, yeah, I think as long as you maintain it consistently, you should be. They should be okay. Like I said, I, I will reserve final judgment until it's complete and I can watch the whole thing. Who took my dice miniature wargaming? That movie disappointed me on so many levels. Voice work was amazing, but other than that, I was not happy. Great answers. Another great video. I presume you're talking about the Ultramarines um, movie. It was just a dull storyline for me, but the rest of it I was happy with. That's, um, you know, just speaking from my perspective. And, and I was, when I first watched that movie, I was just getting into the hobby. And it worked in so much as if that was what it was supposed to do, in fuel my enthusiasm for it. It made me want to get Space Marines. It made me buy a land speeder for my Ultramarines. That movie did that. So on that level, it worked, GW. Um, right, okay, got two more questions left. Next one comes from Drake's War Channel. It says, a splendid video as always. Thank you, sir. My question to you, Pete, is which faction is your preferred enemy in 40k and for what reason? Which faction? Well, for me, I think... Well, I like all the factions, but my preferred faction to fight, so regardless of whatever I'm playing, would probably have to be Chaos Demons. Why Chaos Demons? Because I think they look scary on the tabletop. They look scary and they, I don't know, up 
the game slightly. That's just my personal thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, it is. Chaos Demons, I'd have to say, although I have only played against them two, maybe three times since I started. I don't play very often. Um, but yeah. But they look amazing. I don't have a Chaos Demons army myself. That would probably be my next army if I was going to go for another army though. Yeah, definitely. Because I've got an idea for a a nice campaign-esque thing to do with chaos demons and tables and things. I think that would be good. Yeah, but chaos demons. And lastly, right, it's tattoo for you. Hmm. Okay. It says, I'm excited with anything animated or movie related to the grim dark lol. I have Ultramarine and enjoyed it for what it was, a small story in the 40k universe. If I did have any dislikes about it, it was draggy in parts. Yeah, I agree, it was. The prologue was awesome and I'm looking forward to seeing where it can go. And potential for other movies as well. Yes, I do agree about the time it's take it the time frame it's taking. But chalk it up to the fans made part maybe the money and time it takes to make it possibly. Thanks for the answer, brother. Now for the questions. Question, what movie genre would you like to direct? And where are you on your shelf of shame? Two great questions. What movie genre would I like to direct? Any. I just like to direct. It doesn't matter for me. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. Any movie genre. Even romantic comedies and stuff like that. I suppose I'd rather be directing stuff that I like uh, more though, so fantasy, science fiction, that kind of thing, I'll say that. Thrillers would be great. Yeah, but I'll say sci-fi fantasy. Yes. Where are you on your shelf of shame? My shelf of shame is empty. I have no shelf of shame anymore. Um, I've got a couple of bits of terrain which are out of the shelf ready for painting I have nothing left I've built it all and yeah I've done everything else I have no shelf of shame Yay! and I'll tell you what's been helping with that is on the bench with Pete um, video series helps me get stuff done cleared for instance uh, my gargoyles I did was on, on the bench with Pete I mean, I'm currently, behind the camera is, I'm currently in the middle of playing through um, the first mission in the Fate of, in Mini War Gaming, it's the Fate of Faum campaign, the first ever campaign they did, which is called Ambush. Yeah, I'll give a little quick look. Yeah. There. So, I'll just... Uh, So there you see, I'm playing through that and a lot of that, including uh, these gargoyles here, they were not, it was not done except on, on the bench with feet. So I'm just checking my battery here. Yeah, so on the bench with Pete yeah, enabled me to do that, so yeah. Um, but it's great not having a shelf of shame anymore, but I'm kind of like, okay, I want to I wanna get more models. But it's forcing me to work on what I've got and make them better and finish them more. Because it's like, you know, you know, there's finished and there's finished. You know, there's playable, there's finished, and then there's finished. <laughs> many different levels in between. Thanks so much for your questions guys, it's been brilliant. Um, I always look forward to doing these um, for you. Um, pop your comments or questions down below or email me or put them in a video, whatever you want to do. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Remember, all brushes lead to war. Bye for now.